Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When people think of U.S. Navy vessels, they likely consider above water ships as the most important part of the organization's power. However, submarines are one of the most crucial elements of the United States Naval Force. Submarines have a long history, the concept dating back to the late 1500s. History states that the first navigable submarine came about in the early 1600s. But the vessels were nothing like what is used today. Over the years, the submarine received many design changes, which would later reflect what many people recognize today. In the United States, the first submarine used for warfare would go on to be known as the Turtle, which was used during the American Revolution. The Turtle was called the world's first official combat submarine. As it had been designed to break the British blockade at the Boston Harbor. Though they didn't play as big of a part for the United States during World War I, some submarines were still used for patrolling purposes during this time. The usage of submarines picked up during World War II. Years later, the USS Nautilus would make history as the first nuclear-powered submarine. As well as the first submarine to cross the North Pole under the Arctic Polar Ice Pack. Over the years, the submarine design has changed, but what hasn't changed is the need to protect the propeller. A submarine's propeller is considered the most sensitive part of the ship. So it is often covered for the protection of the parts. What started out as a regular, old-fashioned propeller or asymmetrical screw became a much larger propeller during the Cold War. This was done to decrease the noise of the propeller and increase the stealth capabilities of the submarine. As designs changed, submarine propellers became larger and moved slower in order to keep stealth at the forefront of the mission. Thanks to its many uses in various forms of sea combat and stealth operations, It is important for the U.S. Navy and other naval organizations to keep their submarines in working order. When a vessel is ready to be inspected, cleaned, or repaired, it undergoes the process of dry docking. The 
the submarine is taken to the service yard during this process and brought onto dry land. Often, the vessel is brought into the dry dock with the help of a tugboat and various personnel guiding the way. Over the course of about 8 to 10 hours, the dry dock is then drained for engineers and other experts to take a look at the submarine. During the submarine's time in the dry dock, along with varying forms of maintenance, the ship may be washed. Blasted to remove rust or defective paint, or cleaned and painted. Once the submarine has been deemed ready to depart, the dock is flooded once more. Like how it was brought into the dock, the submarine is towed out of the dry dock and to a safe area before being able to set sail. While finally out at sea, the submarine may undergo various forms of sea trials or phases where the vessel is tested. These trials are an essential part of construction and proper vessel maintenance. which is required for not only submarines, but also boats and ships. In February of 2022, the U.S. Navy announced that the Virginia-class fast attack submarine Montana SSN 794 had completed its Alpha Sea trials. According to the Navy, the trials were conducted to evaluate the vessel's propulsion plant. While performing high-speed maneuvers on the surface and underwater. The submarine's accomplishments were considered an important milestone for the shipbuilders. Another important training might be the completion of SYNCAX. However, this is a milestone focused on the submarine crew's ability to load and aim missiles rather than the submarine itself. SYNCX is short for Sync at Sea Live Fire Training Exercise. which is a U.S. Navy program that allows sailors to get live at sea, live fire practice by using decommissioned ships as targets. The crew members must detect, locate, track, and engage a unit at sea. all while disposing of dangerous and expensive ships no longer in use. Unlike airplanes and, and 
where people could see them in the air and everything else, and, and that the ground launch missiles where everybody knew exactly where they were. Submarines, you didn't know where they were. And so we thought we were the number one deterrent, and that felt good. A submarine crew may also participate in various drills while out at sea, such as man overboard drills and fire drills. These are typically considered part of routine training exercises. Many of these actions may be performed on the bridge or the area where the submarine is controlled while it's on the surface. The officer or captain on the deck will typically give orders and direct operations. Back inside the ship, crew members often keep busy with work. Work shifts often change every six to eight hours while on board the submarine. And crew members must always be prepared to help when needed. Many crew members have described the submarine as cramped. With little room to extend your arms and very little private space. The beds are typically small, and even the hallways are narrow. I came in the Navy right after, right after high school, and I thought um, not only is that a, a challenge, but I wanted to challenge myself a little more, and I was getting the opportunity to uh, volunteer for submarines, and I took it. I didn't, didn't do a whole lot of research, um, but uh, since then, I, I think that it was, it was the right choice, and I've been, uh, haven't looked back. Inside the submarine, many of the crew members have said they look forward to their daily meals. On some vessels, there are even crews who make meals such as pizza from scratch. Some mess halls, like the USS South Dakota, may even be decorated to make the experience more enjoyable for the crew members. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.